Hi, everyone. Thanks to those that are here live with me today. Um, we are recording. There's going to be a replay available later today. Um, but we're here for Monday Motivation. We host this live event the first Monday of every month as a way for you to tap into what's new in the community, what's coming up for events, what member benefits do you really need to know about, and then we dive into some tips and resources and tools to help you within the community or with your professional goals. My name is Megan Bizzuto, for those of you that I haven't met before. I'm the president at IAW and so happy to be here with so many of you today um, and super excited about what we have planned for the month of December. Now, I know that we're approaching holiday, but some of us are already there. Um, it's it's going to get busy. There's a lot going on. So thank you for spending some time with me today. I appreciate it. Um, you'll find that our programming will we'll keep running for a few weeks now. We will go quiet the week of Christmas, um, give people some time to spend with their family. There's still lots going on in the community online. We won't be hosting any live events that week. So this month at IAW, um, Monday Motivation kicks us off with kind of a general overview of everything going on. I like to run through the programming that we have planned we have one more, we hosted a new member welcome last, last week. We have one more planned. This is a great opportunity. If you have questions about the, the online community, about your benefits, we use this to welcome our new members, but I often tell people, you don't have to be new to come join us at that event. You can have, we, we get people who have years of membership who pop in to say hello, pop in to see what's new in the community. So new member welcome is really open to anybody. We have speed networking coming up. Um, speed networking is on Thursday this week. We're also hosting a global speed networking for our international group on Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning US time next week. Um, speed networking is a fun way to tap into new introductions. It's, it's one hour of kind of power packed, moving around breakout rooms, having conversations, and you'll be able to, to share and ask with the community and follow up and continue collaborating and communicating after the event as well. Our local chapter connects are running next week. So for every chapter in the United States, we have either a fireside chat or a coffee and conversations planned. You can see the full calendar on the website. The way these work, if you haven't attended one before, is you'll be in a breakout room with the local chapter. Each chapter has a host to guide the conversation. And there's a, there's a topic theming that conversation. Now, if you are not available at the date and time that your local chapter is meeting, one of the great things about being virtual still is that you can, you can go connect with any of the other chapters. So your membership provides unlimited access to all of the events on the calendar. You can't attend all of them because there is overlap in the timing, but if you see a topic that you're really tied into or you wanna see somebody specific speak, you can go visit those chapters, no problem. We have asked the experts that will be added to the calendar today. These we feature live on LinkedIn. As a member, you can submit your questions through the community to be answered live. Um, they're a lot of fun, so definitely tune in if you can. If you miss us live on LinkedIn, these do get recorded and stored on LinkedIn, so you can always go back and access the replays. Horizon Insights, we have one more Horizon Insights webinar coming up on Wednesday this week. We're going to be talking about personal branding, which is always a great topic. And then we have a leadership lab coming up on, I believe it's the 22nd. That's going to be added to the calendar today. We just confirmed the, the topic and I had written it down and now I don't know where I put it. So that'll be announced later today. You can see that within the community. All right, as I take a quick pause here, I do like these to be interactive. If you have any questions or anything you wanna share, the chat is open, pop it in the chat. You can also use the Q&A function within Zoom. I'll see that here as well. So if you have questions or anything specific you want me to answer, um, pop it in the chat. I will apologize, my cat. Um, likes to zoom bomb me. So she has decided that now's the time she's busting into my office. She just opened the door and came in and she likes to come sit on the back of my chair. So we have partnered with fin Financial Times Live. They're hosting an event live on December 15th and 16th. It's a virtual event. 
and members can save 20% on their registration. I have a link on this slide. Um, uh, bear with me for just a minute. We're having an access problem and I wanna make sure that people can get in. Um, so the link on the slide, I will link out to all of these links in the community after we're done today. Um, so stay tuned for the follow-up that will include all of these, all of these links. Um, I'm just sending a message to get somebody the link to join here. Um, okay, so my cat's going to hang out with us, I guess. She is, um, she's, she's going to not go away like I asked her to. So we'll we'll sit tight with the cat for a couple minutes. Um, so Financial Times Live, we've partnered with them on this event. So save 20% on your registration. I was just looking at the, the speaker list and some of the topics. It looks like a really great event. So I know that this is a busy time of year, but if you have space in your calendar for professional development, this looks like a really great event. All right. IAW Advent, we have published a, an Advent calendar for the community, 24 days of free resources. You have to subscribe to get the, the daily email with the updates. Um, the link, again, all of these links will be available after we're live today, um, but there's, there's a, at the, on the main website at the top of the page, there's a link to it. There's a couple of pop-ups on the website. We've sent a couple of emails. But the 24 days of free resources are things like eBooks and worksheets and templates and things that, that are gonna help you through a variety of, of challenges. Now, as a member, you get unlimited access to all of these and they will be in the community as well after this, this 24 day challenge is over. But if you're looking for any kind of guides or resources, I encourage you to check this out. The Perks Program. Now, I know we're all doing a lot of shopping right now, and I talk a lot about the Perks program because I think it's a great benefit. There are, as you can see, it's scrolling through the video, um, every month they release new discounts in Perks. And I tend to go and look anytime I'm making a big purchase or we're traveling, I just go check on Perks to see if I can save something somewhere. I like to give the example, uh, this is going back two years now, but my family was going on a ski trip and I was like, oh, I wonder if they have anything for skiing. And I was able to save about $200 on our lift tickets for that one weekend. And so if you're at the initiator membership, that covers the cost of your membership, right? And so definitely check out the perks program. Oh, I love seeing um, in the chat that people have used this. Um, definitely check out the perks program if you're doing any kind of shopping for yourself or for your family or any travel. There's lots of great things out in the perks program. UPS is another one of our partners, and I encourage everyone to check this out. Whether you are shipping a product frequently or you only ship occasionally, this is a great opportunity to save on your shipping fees. Um, once you set up the account, there's no charge to set up the account. So you can set up the account and use their little calculator to see how much it's going to cost you and then make your decision about where you're going to ship from. But I've recently started using this for some of the things I ship out and was surprised to find I was paying less by using the, the UPS program. So if you ship at all, I encourage you to check it out. You also, you can see that there's different discounts based on the service that you're using and you get UPS smart pickup service for free, which is really cool if you, this is great if you're a business owner and you have product you're shipping out, they come to your house the same time every week to pick up your shipments. Um, so it's, it's a great, great program. I wanted to put this reminder in here about our app in case you've missed the reminders in the community. There is now an app available where you can access the community. It's called the HL Connected Community. You enter the domain of community.iowomen.com. You log in using the same website login details that you have, and it puts the community right in your phone interface. It's, it's easy to navigate. Um, so I encourage you all to check out the app as well. Andy, I see your question here about contributing as an expert on Ask the Expert. Um, your, so as an influencer member, we're rolling out roadmaps now, and I know 
specifically that yours is in process because I just had a look at it. Um, so all of the influencer benefits are delivered through that roadmap. So we'll get your, your calendar and schedule planned out and then we'll be in touch about um, confirming dates and topics and all of that. So anyone with an influencer benefit membership, we're delivering all of those benefits through the roadmap and you'll, you'll get your roadmap soon. Um, Andy, I know yours is in process. If you have a question about your roadmap, you can always reach out to member services and they can help um, define because it's a new process. We're rolling it out based on either join date or renewal date. So it, it depends on who's upcoming, but the influencer roadmap allows us to visualize the influencer benefits over the course of a 12 month program. Um, it's it's a, a fun, fun way of looking at everything the influencer includes. So Andy, we will be following up with you soon um, to get to get your items scheduled. All right, book club. So I wanted to pop this in here. We hosted our last book club of the year last week. And I have a thread open in the IEW community looking for some feedback on do we think this should continue and what kind of format would members like to see for a book club and what book suggestions do you have? When we first launched the book club earlier this year, we had a, an overwhelming excitement about book club. I want to do it. I want to do it. And if you're anything like me, um, there's, you can see, I have this, this pile of books back here and I buy, I have a, another pile over there. I buy a lot of books and I want to read a lot of books, but I don't always make the time or space to read them. So book club has helped with that because now I'm, I'm finding I'm reading the book so that I can be prepared for the discussion. But a lot of the feedback I've received is that I'm not alone in this, this um, acquiring of books without necessarily finding the time to read them. And so if, if we think book club should continue and, and we wanna see it, we do have to make sure that we have a lot of, enough participation um, and the format that's gonna work for the majority of people. So I am looking for feedback. If you're interested in seeing it continue, definitely go into the community. There's a recent thread around book club and share your thoughts there. If you, if you have an idea on the type of format we could follow, if you have specific books you'd like to see us discuss, the other thing that I often share with people is the way we have this set up is you don't necessarily have to have finished the book to join the conversation. We, we've set it up as networking and, and community, so you can still gain a lot of support and advice, even if you haven't read the book. But I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas and suggestions on book club to continue for next year. All right, so. My topic for today in terms of community support and, and something we can look at this month is profile optimization. And if you are a business owner or a, a solopreneur, you do any kind of coaching or you're, you've ever looked for a job or you want to show up in the online space, you want to connect with people, your profile becomes very important. Now, a lot of times when I think about the word optimization, I go back to my my marketing SEO days when I used to do um, search engine optimization and building in the right keywords and the right links and the right everything to a website so that we're more visible. Now I'm going to apply that same methodology to your profile. And as you can see here, I have my IAW profile shown on the left, but I'm also looking at things like my LinkedIn profile and my Instagram profile. Now, Instagram, I only use for personal. So you can see my profile photo is different and it's actually, it's locked. You have to, I have to approve people to follow me there. Um, <laughs> I often will approve you to follow me there, but it's mostly my kids and my cat and my dog. And um, I'm not using my Instagram profile to attract an audience. Whereas my IAW profile I am and my LinkedIn profile I am. So profile optimization becomes very important because this is how we're showing up in the online space. This is how people are finding us. This is how we're getting their attention. So I'm gonna go through a few things on how to build your profile and make it stand out. I wanna start with this, this idea of what is it people are searching for? Most likely they don't probably know, they might have met you and they might know your name and they might search for you by name, but most likely that's not where they're starting. Most likely they're coming and they're searching for what you do or the services you provide or the things you speak about or 
the product you sell. So I want you to think about as you write your profile, your, your little bio section, what are the words that you can put in there so that you're showing up where people are searching for you? So when you're writing your bio, I have a few things here to include in your bio. And in your IAW profile, let me go back for one second, you can see that there is this, this bio section. And within the IAW, whoops, that wasn't supposed to click. Sorry, there's a weird transition on my slides. So within the IAW community, the, the bio section is a, is a text box. And you can hyperlink things. You can change the format of things. You can put photos in there. So use that to your ability. It's a Put the text in there that's going to draw attention to you. Now, if we go to my, my list here, we want to make sure that you understand what you're hoping to achieve with this profile. Where is it that you want to show up? Are you trying to showcase your expertise so that when people search for you, if you're looking for a new job, they, that you show up and, and look like the expert in your field? Are you trying to attract clients because you're a coach? Are you trying to um, just put out your professional experience? So, so set some goals around what you're going to use this profile for. Be concise. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen the, pro, the bios that are written in there, like two pages long and they just go on and on and on. And most likely if you haven't captured somebody's attention right at the start, they're not gonna read that whole thing. So be concise, as concise as possible. Write your bio in the third person. Utilize keywords, um, the, the words that somebody is searching for. So the keywords that people, that you want to be searchable for. Link to a portfolio. If you don't have a portfolio, link to a website, link to anything that shows an example of where you've contributed in the past. And then finally, infuse your personal brand. And by this, show your personality. It doesn't have to be just a, a, a standard bio that, that says, I am Megan, I work here, I went to school here, this is my experience. You can, you can add some humor if that fits your personal brand. You can add, add some edginess if that fits your personal brand, but show your personality a little bit if you can. I see a question here, examples regarding the keywords. Um, okay, so I have an example from when I was a marketing consultant. And if I have a profile in the IAW community and it just has my name and maybe my business name, and somebody comes and I live in the Boston area. So let's say somebody is looking for a marketing consultant or, or marketing services, marketing something in Boston. Now, if the word um, marketing does not show up in my profile, they're not gonna find me. So if my, if my, my name is here and my company name was Megboz, well, if, if I don't have marketing services or marketing consultant or marketing, um, strategist, if I don't have that in my profile, I'm not showing up as anybody that has anything to do about marketing. So Marilyn, another example with coaching, I see a lot of people use their business name, but they don't necessarily say I coach on these topics. So if you're a career coach, what types of things might people be looking for to tie into career coach, resume services, interview skills, um, job job search support, like anything that somebody could be searching for to help find you. Um, and then I see another question here. Are there any resources around how to build a portfolio for coaching and consulting? That is a great question. I believe that we have a resource available. I'm going to make a note to follow up on this and I will put this in the notes because we actually, we internally had a conversation about this and a lot of times, if you're somebody that works in the design space, then you likely have a portfolio, web design or art or graphics, or if you've built websites, there's, there's a lot of examples where you already have that portfolio available. Um, for coaching and consulting, it's a little bit different. It might look like testimonials. It might look like specific results, but we... I talked about building this resource and I know we have something available. So I will pull that out and link to it in the notes for today so that you can, you can get started there. Um, but I think that no matter where you're at in your career or in your professional journey, having, having something that showcases 
what you've done. So it, it sort of puts the results into somebody's eyes, right? It's not just a, I delivered five new websites, but I delivered these five websites and this is what they look like. Or I coached five people and they had this title and this many years of experience and this is the improvement we saw. So having a way to quantify exactly what it is that you've done. All right, next profile photo. Um, this, I think over the last two years, I've seen a lot of improvement with profile photos. I think that there's, there's more visibility in the online space with all of us being remote, but we've also seen massive improvements in the quality that comes out of just our, our phones. So your profile photo is important because this is how you stand out. Clear, clean photo. What that means is a mostly clear backdrop, looking at the camera, full face view. Um, you can see on the bottom, I have this X here. So we've cropped somebody out of a photo, super distracting. You don't want people thinking of the other person in the photo. So only yourself and no, no cropping where you're gonna get somebody's arm, the, you, you sometimes have the hand coming around. You don't want that. And then at the top right, I've put an X on the selfie. Um, I know that, that there, there are ways to get a high quality photo with a phone. Um, avoid filters, avoid things that are going to change the quality of the photo. Show your brand personality when you can. If again, like I said, like if there's humor or there's edginess, it's okay to show that here. Warm and welcoming is what you're looking for. You want, you want your ideal client to look at that photo and say, yep, I'm comfortable. I want to reach out to that person. So profile photos are important. Also, I suggest if you haven't updated your photo in a, quite a while, um, try to make a plan to do that soon. I think that a lot of us get a photo up there and then two or three years go by and it's the same, same photo. And I know I look a lot different than I did two or three years ago, <laughs> um, but make sure that you're updating it consistently, especially if your hairstyle has changed or if you've lost a lot of weight or if, if things have changed about your, your physical um, characteristics, get a new photo up there so that it's the real you that's being represented. I'll never forget, there was somebody I was, I was interacting with on LinkedIn and, and beautiful, just warm, wonderful photo. And we got on Zoom and I was like, is it, is it really the same person? I, I was fascinated. Um, so make sure that you're, you're keeping your photo updated. You'll often find, especially on the IAW platform, when you interact on the platform, that photo shows up and it's a good opportunity to draw people's attention in. So keep your photos updated. So then where to update your bio? So I've been talking in the context of the IAW platform because that is a, a big part of how you access some of the benefits and how you connect within the community. So any professional organization where you have a, 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 a profile, a bio available, make sure you're updating those and make sure that you're, you're consistently updating them and updating them timely if something has changed about your job title or if something has changed about your responsibilities. Social media, LinkedIn is a big one. LinkedIn is a great opportunity for you to showcase who you are and what you've done, but you can also create shorter versions for Instagram, Twitter, even Facebook. Um, they're not as optimized in terms of to give you the space to provide a full bio, but you can, you can do a lot in that little snippet. You can get creative, you can use emojis. So making sure that, that you're consistently updating in all of your places. Online directories are another one. If you're a coach, you might be a part of a directory. If you have a local business, you might be a part of a directory. And sometimes those directories will be tied to a business. Sometimes they'll be tied to a person. So looking anywhere you appear online, making sure it ties back to the profile that you want it to tie back to. And then your own website. If you have your own website, having, having a, a feature page where people can understand who you are, and, and get that sense of who you are, what you've done, what, um, how can they continue to support you, work with you? All right, a question here. What is the recommended profile update frequency to stay relevant in all of your online platforms? That is a really good question. Um, I don't, so Sharon, I don't have a specific timeline because I think it really depends on what it is you're doing. 
And so I tend to look at mine about once a quarter and refresh it if it needs to be refreshed. But for example, if you get a new job, you're likely going to go to LinkedIn and update your job title pretty soon after that happens. So anytime there's an important milestone, I would look to update it. And then if there haven't been milestones, look, kind of do a refresh every quarter. Doesn't mean you have to update it, but just scan through it. Does it still read the way you want it to read? Does it still include some social proof? Does it still have the details that you want it to have there? Showing up in search, I want to um, point out that within your IAW profile, so if you go to profile, my account, and then privacy settings, you can set each element of your profile to be publicly searchable or not. So on my profile, I have opted to have my bio, my name, my title, um, my email address, my website, all publicly searchable. So that means if somebody is on Google and I show up in their Google results, when they click that link, they're gonna be able to connect with me in terms of seeing my email address and, and learning more about me. You can set it to where only yourself can view it, only members can view it, only contacts within the community or the public. Now these, these settings will, will vary depending on who you are and what you do, but I wanted to point out that it is something you can do if you're looking for exposure outside of the IA network as well. You can set your profile up to be searchable outside of the network. A few tips for success here. So I talked a lot about profiles. A high quality photo is a must. If you have a grainy, blurry profile, if you have something where there's other people in it or it's distracting, that's, that's gonna turn people away. So high quality photo is a must. A bright solid background can help you stand out. I don't know how many Clubhouse users we have, but often if you scroll through Clubhouse, you see a lot of people with a bright colored background and that helps you to, to stand out. Um, it is entirely possible to take a high quality photo at home. If you have somebody else that can help you with this, like I know that on, on my phone, there's a portrait setting, which helps to increase the quality. Um, look up before you start sort of what to do with lighting and how to get the best, the best spot to take that photo. And I actually have a resource today that I'll link to that is, is ways you can get a high quality photo at home. Within your bio, use a strong headline to attract attention quickly. So I mentioned if your profile, if your bio is two pages long, most likely you're going to lose people. They're gonna, they might read the first paragraph, but then if you haven't captured their attention, they're gonna stop there. And if all the good stuff is at the end, they're gonna miss that. So make sure that you're using a headline to attract attention and giving people logical ways to step down in through what it is they need to know about you. Research each platform and apply best practices. So I've talked a lot about the IEW platform, but LinkedIn has a whole series of best practices. Instagram has a series of best practices. So make sure that you're, you're applying what makes most sense for that specific platform. And then finally, proofread and then proofread again. And if you can, ask somebody else to read it as well. Maybe a couple of people, some people that know you, some people that don't because most likely what you've written sounds perfect in your mind, but when somebody who doesn't know you as well reads it, they may have questions or it may not make as much sense to them. So pull in people when, whenever you can to proofread your bios. I mentioned some resources. So I have four resources that I'm going to connect. I don't know why these are loading so slow. Um, these will be linked up in the, the notes when I publish this to the community later today. So the first one is perfecting your IAW member profile. It goes into each of the fields and gives you some details on um, updating those fields. Take a better portrait, our tips for um, your profile photos. 10 step to, steps to optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Again, LinkedIn is a massive platform for a lot of this. And I think that it's, it's 
spending time there and really understanding the platform makes sense for most of us. So we have 10 tips for optimizing your LinkedIn profile, as well as this is a, a two page kind of handy resource sheet with more LinkedIn profile tips. So as things change on the platform, we update these and, and make new versions available, but these are the four that will be linked today. And to answer the question, yes, the presentation will be sent after the session. So what's gonna happen is once we're done here, the recording will process, I'll get it processed, I'll get it posted to YouTube. I will download, I'll get the slides in PDF, I'll get all the links, I'll put everything in the community and you'll also get an email letting you know that it's been posted so that you can access everything right within the community. Now, I'm gonna talk through contact um, for support, but if you have questions, pop them in the chat and I will, um, I'll get to those questions as well. So I wanna make a case for member services because member services is a great team of support. They're there for things like password resets or can't get into something, but they're also really good if you have a question about how to use a specific benefit or where to get started with benefits. If you are looking for a new job and, and need some resources, give them a call or email them and, and they'll point you in the right direction. We also have local chapters office at iuwomen.com. If you are looking to connect with your local chapter, um, local chapters office will, will be able to get you upcoming events. If you're interested in leadership with local chapters, we have a lot of local chapters where we, we could use some more support on the leadership teams. If that's something you're interested in, shoot us an email at localchaptersoffice at iuwomen.com. Again, we can support you with the resources, the events, any questions, any technical issues, anything, anything you need help with within the community, they're there for. You also are welcome. You can connect with me within the IEW community. You are welcome to message me through the platform. Um, I will warn you if you're looking for support, member services will always be a faster response usually, but I love hearing from our members. I love the, the ideas that come. I love the questions that come. So you're always welcome to reach out to me as well. All right, I'm gonna go through questions. So will this be in the business toolkit section in the website? Um, yes, I will add the resources to the business school. So the business owner toolkit is one of the resources within the community and we tend to add any relevant content that fits within there. So I will add the, the profile um, resources in there. Oh, and, and Sharon points out that member services is, um, they, they, they tend to respond promptly. They are in the office nine to five Eastern time and they have a fantastic response rate in terms of getting back to you quickly. So definitely reach out. Um, I find it best to email them and then they'll give you a call back. There's a phone number as well, 888-852-1600. Um, um, and, and they'll, they'll get back to your phone call as well. Are there any specific resources exclusively for coaches? So within the business owner toolkit, we do have some specific resources for coaches. I don't have them right at the top of my mind right now, but we do have some, some specific stuff for coaches in there. I will link to the business owner toolkit in the notes from today so that you can scroll through and see what we have there. All right, I'm gonna pause for a moment just to see if we get any other questions. And I'll open it up. So um, as we head into the end of the year, I would love to hear what has been your best or most favorite accomplishment from 2021. I think a big part of closing out the year is really celebrating all that we've achieved. So I would love to hear if you wanna share in the chat um, what your, what your favorite accomplishment of 2021 was. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you like my Christmas cup. This is a cup that is in my cabinet all the time. Um, I use it all throughout the year, but I finally feel like we're in December and I can use my holiday cup without being judged for my choice of holiday cup. <laughs> um, oh, I love this Andy bestselling author. That's exciting. <laughs> um, so we have, we have Andy celebrating her status as best-selling author from 2021. Anybody else have any achievements they want to share in the chat? I'll hang out here for a minute. Hopefully people are typing. 
we should we um, asked this question over the weekend as well. We had a local chapter event over the weekend and asked this question and had a lot of exciting responses. Um, all right. We have Emily join my industry guild, a prestigious one I had been working towards my entire, my whole career. That's amazing, congratulations. Stephanie, I ran my first online course. That's so fun, congratulations. Um, starting my journey in coaching and consulting. Oh, we have somebody else building a, a course now. Partnered with another coach and launched a new website. I love partnerships. I think that's a great way to, to um, increase your influence and, and make a bigger impact. Launched my first summit, congratulations. Wrote my first romance novel as I plan to teach other women to do the same next year. That's, that's fantastic. I love this. Started health consulting. All right. Well, I'm, I am excited to see all your accomplishments. We're going to do some fun stuff in the community, celebrating some of this as well in the coming weeks. Um, well, we kind of reach this point where we think back and celebrate everything we've done this year and look forward to 2022 and how big can we dream and, and what kind of goals, big goals can we set for next year? So we, we do this tie of, of winding down 2021, but gearing up for next year at the same time. And I often find looking back on my progress and the things that went well and the things that didn't go well helped me to plan a, a clearer vision for what's coming for the following year. So thank you all for tuning in live today. Um, again, this will be available in the community later today. I'll get it posted along with all the, the links and resources and the, the PowerPoint PDF for you to access. So if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me or member services. I hope you all have a great month of December. I know it can get a little bit crazy. So try to find some peace for yourself. Try to, to appreciate, wind down and enjoy the moments. Um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing all of you back here again for an event soon. Have a great day. Thank you.